I think, you know, at your core, you're definitely an engineer, but you also know how to build amazing brands. The strategy that you go into with fundraising, you're surgical in making sure, you know, as you're diligencing potential investors, they have to fit the brand narrative. And it's been amazing to see. I love, you know, what a nerd I am about this stuff. So from an, from an entrepreneur point of view, as you're fundraising, can you share some of your best practices for really finding that right fit as you're meet, especially as new firms are popping up, obviously you have an incredible network of, of investors globally, but as new firms are popping up, as you're, as you're meeting potential new investors or potential advisors or board members, what, what does that diligencing look like from your side to make sure that they fit the brand, but more importantly, are gonna help you execute? Yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, the first thing I would say is before I get into a little bit of that, I would say you, the, the first diligencing that has to happen is your own. Like, you know, sometimes people, you know, I, I, I have people come to me sometimes and say, well, you're the person that knows how to raise money in Miami. Can you introduce me to investors? Or, um, you know, people just call me out for being really good at fundraising, which I don't necessarily think I am. Like, I, I think my core skill is to build a company that is backable. And these days, there's so much transparency. It's like, you got to assume you're not going to dupe anybody. And so you got to build a company that is backable. And the backability of a company changes at each stage that you're at. So it's a difference between seed investing, series A investing, series B investing, what that means. But your job as an entrepreneur is to do that every, every time. Otherwise, you're just pushing a rope and you're just wasting a lot of time trying to raise capital without the right foundation and without the right story. So, so I would say I'm really super, you know, I call it hyper um, paranoid about making sure that we try to do everything we can before we go out and do that. And then after that, it's mostly just, you know, honesty and hard work and a good reputation and referenceability that becomes important. And, and having, you know, the skills needed to network with potential investors and have investors and connectors to investors help you get to the right people. Um, you know, one of the things, one of the best practices that I sort of subscribe to is, you know, every investor inbound that comes in, I, I dispose of it one way or another. I typically ask them, you know, their stage preference and so forth. And if I think they're sort of a near term fit, even if I'm not raising money, I tend to have those conversations. So I, I get to know them, they get to know us so that when the time comes for fundraising, it's not, you know, everybody's meeting for the first time. Um, and then it's just being super crisp, you know, being a student of the game and presenting well and having a good data room and having a good financial model and all the things needed so that their experience diligencing you is, is a good one. And they feel like if, if the diligencing is good, then the investing and the partnering with you is going to be good as well. 